And long over way, welcome back everybody to Pinball Storytellers. This is gonna be our QA and this is the show is actually named Storytellers Talk to Twitch Chat. So Points for originality right there. What happened? What's 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 going on there? No, I mean for the, the title of the show. Storytellers yeah, yeah, Talk to yeah, Twitch yeah, Chat. It's like, it's like super literal. <laughs> uh, In this case it's a good thing. Let's see. We'll keep we'll keep the uh, categories there. Let me just add, add the actual chat so people can see it. So guys, uh, let's see your questions. What do we have there? Uh, start putting in questions and oh. we'll answer. Will pinball storytellers have multiplayer? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've had guests. Is that so count? actually, Chucky and I have been kicking this around a lot. We want to have a for, like one of our show formats, and actually, there's a link below, right? Jackie, to all the show yeah. formats. Yeah. We've yeah. Done. So if you, if you do if you go down below and you press the players and characters button, uh, in the things there, there's also a pinball storytellers thingy that you can press, and that will tell you the show formats we've been using until now. And uh, my chat thing is completely busted. And we, we've done all the ones that are listed in there, but those are the ones that we've like kicked around and be like, okay, yes, we know how we can do this and have it have it be fun for everyone. Um, but there's a lot of formats that we're kicking around that we've not put in there yet because we're not sure how that we're, that we're going to work. And um, well, like we kicked around this Mad Libs idea where we get words from chat and we insert them into a story. Um, so we've, we've thought a lot about how to like make a story where chat participates in the crafting of the story. Uh, one of the problems with that is actually technical because of the stream delay. Um, so it would need to be something where we can like get your input and then go with it as opposed to constantly getting like new input. Um, but there, there are ideas for that. There are ideas for how to make pinball storytellers interactive with the chat. And we are working really hard on thinking of ways to make that happen. So I think that's kind of the closest pinball storytellers will ever get to multiplayer. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really add anything to that. <laughs> that's, that's completely it. Um, it's my favorite color. It's red when I'm in a bad mood and blue when I'm in a good mood. Red. Just red and blue and... I know it's the same answer, but that's th th those are my favorite uh, colors. My favorite non-color is black. For those who watch the chat a lot, who watch the stream a lot, I wear a lot of black on stream. It, it, I think it fits me well. I don't know if it actually does, but I think it fits me well. Okay. <laughs> this intro reminds me of old Pixar intros. Good! Old Pixar intros are good! I'm happy with that. What is the guy with the awesome voice for the Gems of Power? Uh, that guy is a voice actor that's named something, something, something. <laughs> Best voice actor name ever. Something, something, something. Something, 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 something. I will tell you in like two minutes. Let me, let me retrieve his name. Um, you gone. You gone. What never crunch is, it, is in there? Okay, his name is... Harris Ricky. That's the voice actor who did the games uh, the Gems of Power intro for us. Harris Wiki. Mm, he was next. Um, that's amazing. I had a lot of people thinking it was very cool. Some people didn't like it too much. Mm, Purple is my everybody's favorite. Purple is my girlfriend's favorite. That's me. Yeah. I don't know. Girls like purple. You like bread? I like bread, too. <laughs> <laughs> but bread's amazing. I actually uh, don't... I, one of, okay, so one of the things I missed most about having a fridge was I couldn't make bread from scratch anymore because I like to do overnight ferments because uh, it develops a lot more flavor. And if you do an overnight ferment, you have to put it in the fridge. You can't just leave it out or you'll run the risk of bacteria that are very harmful getting in there. Also, one of the reasons you can't make homemade... It's not safe to make homemade garlic-infused olive oil because of botulism. Okay, if you say botulism so. Botulism and garlic are really good friends. So store your garlic correctly or you'll end up in the hospital with something that's actually not curable. Ooh. Okay, I'll just, I'll just not do that. I'll just Yeah, turn toast. Toast. See, Elaganon gets me. Toast. And we're cool. That's it. That's the extent of what I do with I bread. I mean, toast is essentially dry bread. Think about it. That's literally what I do with bread. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, toast and I have this, like, grilled cheese sandwich maker that I sometimes use. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I hate it. Interesting. It's it's like, the, like I'm very picky with food. Uh, for example, I don't like my eggs in I oil. I, I only like my eggs in the butter. Is you it common to cook eggs with oil in... Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe? Like, Germania is the land of fats. Our, well, I mean, our, butter is a fat. <laughs> no, put it like this. American food is not as fat as traditional Romanian food. Wow. An American, an obese American could not compete with a farmer eating. Like a farmer that's maybe a bit more fatter than me at eating. You could not. Wow. I've seen a Romanian farmer eat about 43 hot dogs once. Oh, no, well, equivalent of hot dogs. They were called salmari. It's like um, minced meat in like a sauerkraut, if you know what it is. Mm hmm. Yeah, exactly. Minced meat and sauerkraut, and they're quite spicy. They have like little pepper balls inside of them. It sounds really good. Well, cooking eggs in, in butter is like the traditional traditional French way of doing it, and that's why everyone else does it that way. But, I don't like but... I don't like the I don't like the oil thing. It's like way too fat, and I can't eat the uh, white thing with whose name I can't remember. I've actually never. I mean, I fried eggs in, in oil. But I've never made like scrambled eggs in oil. And when you fry something, if you do it correctly, most of the oil stays in the pan. Because when you're frying something, what's actually cooking it is the steam, the water being turned into steam, and it pushes the oil away. If you overcook something, you run out of water, and then the oil like soaks into the fried food. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to take it out just before that happens, so there's a little bit of moisture left, but it's perfectly... Mm. Like, do you eat three times a day? No, I eat two times a day. I eat, uh, like, usually at work, I get to eat, like, maybe a sandwich or something, like a snack. Uh, at home, breakfast is for me at one or two whenever I get home. And after that, streaming is starting, and I either usually eat before that. I try to eat before that, sometimes I can't. And I end up kind of a bit starving myself. Like, for example, now I'm quite hungry and eating after the stream. So, yeah, that's about it. I usually eat two times a day, basically because of full schedule. So, lately I've only been eating, like, once a day, a big meal, because it's easier with the fridge. And Normally, I, like, before I would have snacks and stuff prepared, and I could just grab something. Um, but actually, when I, a few years ago, when I really wanted to lose weight, I did a lot of research, research into this and looked at the, the clinical studies that have been done. It actually doesn't matter. Like, there's this, there's an urban myth that if you eat more small meals a day, you'll lose weight faster. Not true. Well, the only thing that matters is when, like the time you eat, and not so much like the frequency. Um, you like yam, and uh, or you'll lo won't lose weight as fast, and you just have to watch your calories and not eat too late in at night because regardless of if you're awake or not, uh, when it gets dark, your body starts storing fat. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, very lucky that I have a good metabolism. I would be extremely fat if I didn't. Everybody well, in my family is don't, don't depend on that. You're, 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 you're young yet. I but know. ideally, I would like to eat two or three times a day just because I don't like the feeling of being hungry. But lately, it's just not been convenient. Same here. No, I think nobody likes the feeling of being hungry. Well, no. No, no that's not true. No. Some people do. No, true. Yes, <laughs> yes. Because like, in this world, saying nobody or nothing or impossible is quite rare. For instance, I know a lot of anorexics who actually really feel like when they're hungry, they're doing a good job. And it makes them very proud of themselves. And it's no, it's bad. Whatever. <laughs> so, um, let's see. A couple of things that we missed here. Um, if you what is your play, what favorite is A Song of Ice and Fire? Any, anyone playing in the D&D next car, Psyonix? Whatever to do with D&D and Psyonix? No. I hate Psyonix. Fuck Psyonix. I don't think Psyonix makes sense in the D&D world. Yeah, like, I, Psyonix are fine. I just don't think they make sense in the context. I, I, I just don't like them. I never, I never used them. I used them once. I hated it. I never used them again. In anywhere. It's like, no, they, they have to do like a very big thing to bring me around on Sionix. Um Let's see, which dread how Romania fast food chains operates? Oh, you, didn't, you didn't answer Corlick's question. What's your favorite Song of Ice and Fire book? Oh! Um, I know my answer. So. The first one. The first one? The first one. Um, I love the a first storm one. Of, a Storm of Swords. Ooh, that's good as well. Yeah. I mean, all of them are good. I was actually talking to somebody. 
uh, and she was saying like she loved all of these series and I said you know I, I love them but at the same time I feel like if pe a lot of people compare all of the rings with Game of Thrones I don't feel like you should compare them yet Game of Thrones hasn't finished you can't compare a series of books that has finished with another series of books that hasn't finished also, you can't compare something that stood the test of time with something that hasn't yet. Yeah. Like, every generation has something they think is going to last forever. And Most of them. Yeah. Like, 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 musically, like who, everyone, remember, everyone remembers the Beatles, right? But at the time, they were just considered a pop band, and it was a phase, and they were going to go away. And it's interesting. Um, it's actually, there's, there's a whole field of study dedicated to this, um, which is finding, uh, finding influences and figuring out why they persist. Uh, but the thing that made the Beatles persist was the fact that they did things differently, very technically differently with their music. And if you're not a musician, you might not understand that. Um, but you feel but like it, as a it changed all the music after that point. Um, and that's why the Beatles persist, because they were they, they did this thing that no one had ever done before, and they made it work. And that's important. And you'll, you'll mm -hmm. find that that's always the case. Uh, so Tolkien persists because he did something no one had ever done before. Not and even close. Not even, not even close. Like, like, Tolkien's work was unprecedented. High fantasy was basically unprecedented. Tolkien m invented a genre with a wonderfully written series of books. That... And re remember that that thing over on there, like the series of books, is just literally a big event. Not even the, one of the biggest events in that age. Just a big event. And he had a whole world. He actually, Tolkien hated most of his uh, readers because they could not understand the scope of his writing. He did not try to, he tried to say, to, like, create an event in which he could tell a story, but at the same time he was more putting focus on the world than the events. He was trying to show how big his world is, how varied, how immensely mysterious. And the problem was that it was so unprecedented that people didn't have a, like a, a framework to yeah. hang on. And, and you'd be surprised how much that matters. Um, one of my favorite examples, and this is something everyone, everyone can relate to, um, is all human languages, if you go back and look at them historically, they start out with a color. They start with a word for the color red. And then there's a word for either blue or uh, yellow or green. And then whichever one didn't happen, and then blue. When we don't have a word for a color, we literally can't see it. So they've gone and studied tribes who have no contact with uh, outside civilizations, and they only have their own, they only speak their own language. They show them they'll, they'll show them pictures of thirteen green squares and a blue one, and they think they all look the same. They straight up say, "Oh, those are all the same color." And you go back and look at ancient Greek writing; they talk about the wine dark sea. They didn't have a word for blue. They, and when we don't have a word for something, when, when we don't have an articulated an idea. And put a symbol to it we actually can't think about the idea and we don't notice it so tolkien invented his own and th as, as a linguist this is really easy for tolkien he invented his own words for these things he invented his own uh grammar and vocabulary for what he was doing and then did it and other people saw parts of it but they couldn't see all of it because they didn't have the language exactly and now we do but it's because of tolkien Okay, we've spent too much time on that. Uh, oh, that's such a great question. I know. Let's see. Uh, do you have to think about... Do Romanian fast foods are uh, <clears throat> actually healthier for you? Because, for example, they change the oil a lot and, and like McDonald's because you can see it. Like they, They've done this thing where they've put... They were, they were needed by the government put them to put their fryers somewhere where the customers can see it. And they change the oil almost twice a day, which for my favorite, like other Americans, they, like they don't in America, they keep kind of the same oil for the for the whole day, right? For French fries. Also, they um, put a lot of water in the soda, so you're not actually drinking complete Coke. You're drinking a combination between water and Coke, which is not as unhealthy Sugary. for you. Yep. Yeah. Um, you can't really compare. Let me see. Are mods, mods are... obligated to be up to date on the game of books to deal with spoilers? No. Nope. Game of Thrones books. Nope. Okay. Everything that seems like a spoiler, they can ban. Oh, Justin is right. Just more accurate Wikipedia. I could ask you questions all day and feel like I'm becoming an engineer and doctor while doing that. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Uh, okay. What if you're hungry past 8 probably p.m.? True. 
You just you, go through it. If you're trying to lose weight, don't eat. <laughs> if if you haven't hit your calorie marker for the day, then you can consider eating. It depends on how far past 8 p.m. But yeah, if you're, try, if you're trying to lose weight and it's past 8 p.m., you shouldn't eat. Um, Kobar, but you should definitely keep, track your calories. Crowbar, you're the best Nazi mon. <laughs> it's a the, the big decision. You don't want to go into that. Uh, <laughs> What's your favorite RPG goal set? Uh, actually, I want to address Sukuda's statement. It's impossible to be completely right and completely wrong at the same time. That is not logically true. You can you can uh, construct a logical system where it's possible to have uh, completely contrary ideas both be act both be true. So, what is your RPG goal set favorite? I mean, I I kind of want to stray away from DND and say something else. Just because the ND is the most obvious answer, as I'm streaming in so many campaigns. You could you could pick an edition of D and D. You could start the edition wars. Three point five. <laughs> I actually saw that coming. No, because uh... because if you're a good DM, you can do anything in three point five. Simply because all the resources are there. I you literally gigabytes. Tens of gigabytes of books for 3.5. All ludicrous, of course. Most, a lot, actually, a lot of them ludicrous. But you can choose which one to use. Okay, if I was limiting myself to no house rules, like literally playing the system as it is, uh, without the ability to change anything. <sighs> I, I might pick. I might pick 4e, like D four fourth edition uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I would have to say, you know what? If I had to state what the role is, I would have to say Pathfinder. No, yeah, I mean, well, yeah, one hundred percent. No, it's very different, actually. Like, it's, well, it's I a mean, revised edition. It's, it's it's similar. It's more similar than it is to anything else. Three point oh, five and Pathfinder and, is more uh, similar to each other than they are to anything else. world as well. I love the Apocalypse world. We did like a show, we did an actual show when we finished it. Uh, an Apocalypse World show. It was pretty cool on YouTube, but it's pretty old actually. Yeah. It still had the grasses then. I will give an honorable mention to Traveler, where you can literally die during character creation. Um, but then beyond that, I think that my favorite RPG rule set is anything that I've tinkered with for a long time and made it suit my personal preferences. <laughs> So, because so, uh, any system you start out with, if you play with it long enough, you're gonna end up changing a lot of things. Sinus, I do not know that. Gonix or Eternal Covenant, it sounds familiar, but I do not. I have not seen it. If it's sci-fi, or seen it. If it's a show or read it. Play Tree Neo. Well, Tree Neo is good, but Tree Neo is, is Tree Neo for Neo. Like every DM you're gonna find is gonna have different styles, different preferences, and different ones for a system. You're never gonna find two DMs that will completely 100% agree on a system. Never. Find me two DMs like that, and I'll show you two people that have absolutely no social contact between themselves, like with anybody else but themselves. It's like a lot of things are different because the perspective of which you see things with, and D and D is literally that as a DM. It's your perspective. Of the world as it is. How many different RPG sets have you played for more than three hours? Dark Heresy. I've recently played Only Were, which you are, and a couple of other mods. Uh, Mouse Guard, Dogs in the fucking Vineyard, I think, but I don't remember exactly the name of the rule set. Uh, Monsters, Mutants, and Masterminds, 3.5, 5e, um, Rogue Trader, or oh, this is like another 40k thingy. What else have I played? I feel I played like a no role, oh, uh, like story, uh, story emphasized role playing game whose name I can't remember, but the simple role is what you make a you make a good story and that's it. It's like a very non rules Apocalypse World. Um, I haven't actually played Dungeon World. I would like to. I've played Two B. I think in the one shots with Neil. No, it's that was that was two Neil, not two E. Well, two Neil, whatever that is. <laughs> it makes a big difference, trust me. I don't know it. I I do not know two at all, so I don't. I wouldn't know. I played more than, definitely more than thirteen. I've. I mean, it's been so many years. I've been playing. I mean, I, I played my first time. I played first edition D and D. I was four, 
So I've been playing uh, pen and paper uh, role playing games and other kinds of role playing games for literally as long as I can remember. Um, haven't read the book as really... a to deeds. Yeah, go on. I don't know what. I mean, I know the book, but I haven't read it. Sorry, go on. I think I played D and D. Like I played all editions of D and D fairly extensively for you know, and then um, Vampire the Masquerade. Those are the ones I've invested the most hours in. But like I'm. I remember sitting around tables like trying out systems with friends and I don't even remember the names of them anymore. When I was like 12 or 13. Andy Pellegrino, completely agree with that. It's impossible not to house room as a DM. If you have a DM experience of more than a couple of months, it's very hard not to, like, if you have your own view of that stuff, it's very hard not to house, not to want to house room. You can do it, but to not want to do it. Um, yeah, well, I mean, like, I have actually an example of that. Like, I played 4E um, with Neil and Ryan when it first came out for almost six months before I ended up running into something that was not clear and needed a, a, a ruling. So it is possible. Um, there are systems that don't have obscure or, or unclear rules, or if they do, they're, like, cucked away in corners, so you might never even run into them. Um, I mean, technically there are situations completely outside of the rules that you have to decide how they work, but that's not a house rule. It's just that the rules don't address the problem. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like you can, it's possible for most well-written systems. It's possible to play absolutely by the rules if you want to. It's just most people don't want to because they have their own ideas. But uh, I've uh, said this before. Breasts, breasts but uh, face is actually more important to me. Yeah, I, we, we said we ha answered the exact same question, I think, last time. And the exact same so, way. You, I said, so, you said, breast popular and question. Said, face is more important. I said, yes, but you limited to those two. That was the question. Because I would answer face as well. Uh, I don't know if you played Call of Cthulhu. No, but I want to. I've actually, I've actually, I know the rules to it because I wanted to DM on one shots and I read on the rules. I kind of know how to do it and I think I created even a character for it. Uh, I, I created the characters for a lot of systems, but I haven't actually got to play them. Uh, sword and ashes or something like that it's like an extremely complicated realistic thing it took us four hours to do one combat one one and one combat that's how much it took it um uh star wars again uh created a character haven't played it all of the rings created a character haven't played it because sch scheduling stuff and stuff like that i have played call of cthulhu we actually um we, Chuck and I reviewed the basic Call of Cthulhu, uh, the current edition, potentially to do a horror show for Halloween, but we didn't have time to. Oh, make that's it work. where I, that's why that's where I read the rules for. Yep. I completely um, forgot about that one. So the the Halloween special this year may involve Call of Cthulhu if we have time to review the rule set and think of a good idea. It may. Uh, so you might actually see that on this show. <sighs> Hype. Okay. So I think oh, for people who are asking about dying during character creation, yes, classic traveler. One of the there's a lot of randomness in the character creation process, and one of the things that can happen is you can like be in prison for twenty years, uh, and you can actually die during character creation. That's an option on the table, and you just have to start over. Hmm. Okay, so I think we are past the point that we should stop this. Like, well, let's let's. Well, there's two more questions in chat. Let's just answer those two, and we'll be done. Yeah, no problem. Have either of you played GURPS? Yes, I have played GURPS extensively. Nope. Also, whenever uh, GURPS comes up, I have to tell people that the Malazan Book of the Fallen by uh, Stephen Erickson, those of you who have not read it, it's a fantasy series that's actually finished. It's 10 books. I encourage you to check it out. Um, There's a lot of fantasy series that are really finished and extremely great. Uh, but this, he, like, he like knocked out a, a book every year for like the last 10 years. He actually like got that shit done. He, started out I can as a GURPS a better system. One. I can give you even a better one. Wheel of Time. This dude was not only a physics major and was in the Navy, he eventually realized he wanted to write and he wrote one of the biggest and most extensive fantasy worlds out there. I mean, I mean, Lord of the Rings extensive. Extremely good series of books. And I've been writing, reading them for some time now. And, well haven't finished yet them yet i'm kind of in the middle of the series Earthsea saga i've heard a lot of good things about the earth sea saga as well also has something mm -hmm. as a as a writer and have i touched ravenloft i have touched ravenloft 
It was almost as good as Ravenloft as it was for me. <laughs> um, you can. I mean, Justin. You can. That's that's your thing. That's your thing. That you talk to Zonar. Oh, uh, could I post the character sheets of honor round characters? Yeah, you just you talk. Uh, to my yeah, my character sheet's kind of full of joke answers. Um, that's actually just habit. That's how I filled out my character sheets for the last like fourteen years. Um. Because I have a picture in my head of how my character looks. It doesn't really need to be on the sheet. No one but me is ever going to describe the character. <sighs> but um, I can update Hamara's sheet. Although we don't know if Hamara's alive or dead, so awkward. Um, but I'll, I'll try and be better about updating my uh, my character sheets. And if people are actually going to draw pictures, I, I'll stop giving joke answers. What's the most important thing about storytelling in a Word of Darkness campaign? I know Word of Darkness is a system. Fear. But I've not I've not used it. But I, from the name, I'd say, yes, fear. If remember one thing. Fear is the oldest and most powerful human feeling. If, and especially in a role-playing game, if you manage to create a universe and a situations where your players are legitimately scared for the fate of the characters. Like, not like, oh fuck, I'm just, well, can I create another one? No, legitimately scared. That's when you know you've succeeded as a DM. That's it, that's the point. That's the point where you go to the fridge and you treat yourself to a beer and whatever your favorite food is and feel proud of yourself for just making a amazing d and &E session for some people that will, they will most likely remember their whole lives. Basically, traumatize your players, and they'll rem they'll think you're a really good DM. Mm -hmm. This is the, this, the, this, this this might be familiar to some of you who have watched Neil DM. And you know what? I mean, I lot of, I know a lot of you just think about how do does Justin DM because kind of the only DMing you've seen was was him doing on Pinball Stories. Yeah, this is a new show, and he's gonna be DMing soon. Oh my god, that's gonna be fun. Oh my god. He's gonna Man. be in here five people, including Neil. Oh god. Alright. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah. I haven't DM'd in I haven't DM'd in a while, and certainly DMing Neil is not the easiest thing in the world, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, so remember guys, having this is a gems of power starting this Wednesday at twenty GMT per spree. And we will see you guys tomorrow for the intermission campaign. Of Holy yeah, Dragon I think, Queen. And I think that's it for uh, Storytellers Talk to Twitch chat. Yep. Yeah. That's about it for this week. We'll see you next week. We'll see if we do this thing again with the, thing, with the, with the answers and questions and then game show. Or we'll do an actual story. We'll see. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.